myself. But I okay. introduce this to Samuel. This is the first uh, class of four classes webinar, actually about Blender. So if you want to introduce what you are going to do, yeah. you can start. Sure. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you all for joining. It everything started like a joke between me and uh, Julia, like, ah, do you want to do a Blender workshop? She said, yes. And expecting like something like 20 people. And then we finish having more than one fourth of it. So I'm really, really thankful to everyone for trusting me in uh, and for aiming, let's say, to make better images. Second, I would thank also ICONS in general for organizing the thing because it was really, let's say, helpful to have ICONS behind to organize the, the workshop. And so that I think we can uh, start. Uh, I want to first introduce a bit myself and uh, how we are going to make this, uh, this workshop. Uh, I'm, if, who doesn't know me, I'm Matteo. I'm working with uh, Frank Coppens doing uh, polaritonic nano cavities practically. And I started playing with Blender because I, it's what actually I'm doing, uh, something like four years ago. While I was doing my master thesis in Pisa, I practically wanted to make a better, let's say drawing of my optic table. And I started with Inkscape and it was okay. But then I said like, why, why not to go to 3D? And then I started really like playing like an hobby, like trying to make a mirror, trying to make this thing. And now I'm here making images like this one for covers, et cetera. So like it, it completely happened, I mean, it happened kind of randomly and all my experience really comes from YouTube and learn by doing. So I really passed four years and this was my game. Let's say I was trying, let's say the, sometimes I had some ideas. I want to make this thing of this color. And I really tried, tried and tried. And after some point you would really learn deeply the, the program and it's, uh, it's thought to be really amazing sincerely. So, uh, since we are so many, uh, we decided to make this uh, this workshop in a let's say seminar way, in the sense that you will you cannot interact directly with me talking because I mean we are almost eighty now, and if I have to answer directly everyone, it will be I mean I, I will lose practically too much time, and so I uh, asked Simone that is probably you, you see him, uh, that is the, my, my friend that I'm doing the image with, practically we all the best image, I made it with him uh, to practically join also the, the workshop and he will answer everything in the chat. So if you need like some basic, uh, uh, you have some basic question like, uh, which is the shortcut for this thing or how do you do this? Uh, he will answer for a big problem. Like if I did something that is not clear or you want to repeat an, uh, an, an action, I, I mean, he will stop me and I will repeat the thing. Uh, is everything clear? I think, yeah, I mean, you cannot answer, so yes. Uh, so, so that please uh, open now your Blender file and can you all see my screen? Yes. Uh, yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So uh, one thing that is important uh, here on the bottom left, you will see uh, my my script, uh, my my keyboard practically. When I click something, you should be able to see the the letter I'm clicking practically. And also, if I'm clicking the the mouse, oh wait, sorry. This is too much now. And so you can follow also visually what I'm doing. I will practically tell you each of the shortcut I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm clicking, sorry. And so uh, you should really be able to make the same thing I'm doing. 
the aim of the course is to let you make your image. I mean, I don't want to show you how I make my image. I want to really uh, that everyone make his own image. And um, practically, the idea is now that I don't give any work, homework. I don't ask you to make something to, I mean, for, because I said it. I will, will ask, I will ask you to personalize your the, the image I'm making. So make something that you like, and because I thought everything in a way that you will be, you will be able to do it. So said that, let's start. This is Blender, and these uh, every time you will open a new file of Blender, you will see this scene here. Uh, the this window here it's called the viewport and this is where you will pass like 90 percent of your time practically uh, the scene is composed now by uh, the default scene is composed now by the cube by a camera and by a light you can actually see uh, the name of your scene right here on the top right and this is uh i mean this is the name that you want to give of a, the certain scene so what is actually a scene uh, a scene is a composition of object you can uh, for example by clicking here or uh, you can make a new scene and it's something that is uh, actually important that we will use because you can make a mess in a single scene or having test scenes so it's actually when you create a new scene it creates a new viewport with nothing and usually we will use this i mean i will use this as test regions in which i make whatever i want and then i copy paste it in, a, in the different scene so if you see one of my my file usually there is a principal test one test two test three etc so Let's actually call this test by clicking here. And let's come back to our principal scene and let's call it nanocube. I didn't say it, but uh, after the comments that I had from the last three days, I decided to change a bit the, um, the project. We will make two projects. I mean, it's quite ambitious, but I think I can do it. And one of the projects, it's a graphene nanotube uh, that is hanging on a graph, uh, on a gold contact with some gold gates on a silicon substrate. And another one, it's a molecule. And you probably know this molecule and it, I don't want to spoil it. Uh, that and we will shine a laser on top of that molecule, and then this molecule will emit a photo. Something actually random. The first one is more uh, artistic, let's say. The second one will be more schematic, and that's it. So now I want to show you like the very basics of uh, going around in Blender. So we have a 3D uh, viewport, and in the 3D viewport, we can move our view. If you click the middle mouse button, if you hold it and you turn around, you can actually see you are rotating the view. If you scroll the middle mouse button, you are zoom in, zoom out. And if you click shift middle mouse button, you move the view without changing the rotation of the view. So for example, if I want to uh, focus on this object, middle mouse, shift, scroll, shift, and I'm focusing on one. So this is generally how to move inside the, uh, inside the viewport. Uh, you can also select, for example, the principal direction, and this is actually important. For, uh, by clicking here, top right, you have the 3D axis. So you can click, for example, X, and you will uh, see the, the scene practically through the X direction, or Y, 
or the here is practically everything the same because we have a cube. But uh, this is actually important when you let's say you want to align stuff. You I mean it's very useful to have these different views to uh, let's say see the the side of your your image. So let's come back here and let's uh, start with the basic operations. So uh, you can move the view and now we are going to move the objects. Small uh, comments here. Uh, this lesson with, will be the most boring in the sense that uh, learning Blender, will, you, you will understand that it's learning a bunch of shortcuts. In principle, uh, I can tell you like, uh, how to move, how to do everything, but like with the, with the, the mouse. But you will see that it's like hundred times faster to do it with shortcuts. And at some point, you will it will seems to I mean, it seems to let's say play a game because you are really going fast on top of the the keyboard to move, scale, and do all the operation you have to do. So the shortcut to uh, move an object. Uh, it's with G, that means grab actually. So if you grab, you, you, you press G, you see you can move the object you have selected. If you didn't select it, the selection is with the left mouse button. So you, you select an object, then you click grab, and you see the object is moving. You're in 3D, you only have to remember, and the movement is done here in a plane that is perpendicular to the view that you selected. So for example, if I'm in this view and I click only G, the movement is in the uh, X, Z plane, I think. I can move like this, or I can select, let's say a precise movement. A precise movement is done by clicking again, uh, grab and selecting one of the edges on top uh, where I want to move. For example, if I click grab then X, I see that I'm moving the object only on the X direction. If I click grab Y, only in Y direction, grab Z, only in the Z direction. There is a, another uh, kind of move, movement we can do, and is the movement on a plane. Uh, the movement on a plane is done by selecting the direction that is perpendicular to the plane. So for example, if I click grab and then shift Z, I'm selecting uh, the XY plane. So here I'm moving only on the Z, uh, XY plane. If I click Shift X, I'm moving in the ZY plane, and so on. Uh, to let's say undo uh, an operation. So for example, if you saw like I I moved the object, but then uh, the object came came back to the origin. You do it with the right mouse button. Uh, so in the mean, uh, in the middle of a movement, if you don't like it and you want to put it precisely again where you started, you click the right mouse button. So uh, this is like moving completely randomly. There are uh, other ways. The let's say lazy one that is by clicking here, top left, and you will see you have the three arrows and three planes. And then uh, it's doing practically the same as before, like uh, moving the object on X, Y, Z, or in the plane perpendicular to the given direction. For example, now we I moved randomly my object and I want to put it back precisely in the middle. And I can do it by, for example, going here and trying to move the center at the same position. But there is another, let's say that the most precise way, let's say, and is by clicking N. If you click N in the viewport, you see that you have um, all the information uh, you have all the transformation that you did on your object. So for example, now I see that the location of my object is uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. If I want to put it back in 0, 0, 0, I can type in 0, 0, 0. Or for example, if I want to put my cube at 
two meters from the center, I can directly to click two. This is something you can do like always. I mean, there is like two different ways of doing it. Uh, you can do like also uh, precise movement also in the how we were doing it before. So by clicking grab X and then by clicking the amount you want to move. For example, here I can click minus two and now I'm back in the center. Last thing about uh, movements and, and last thing about trans the first transformation we are doing that once you have, uh, once you're moving, you can see here in the top uh, left, the vector that you are moving. Like for example, here I'm moving on X 6.089, on Y minus 3.5 almost, and on Z 3.02. And this one is giving you like the, let's say an understanding of how much you're moving. And once you click it, I mean, you have the same values here. Okay. Uh, let me see the chat. Okay, see that. Okay, fine. So this is uh, everything for grabbing an object. So <laughs> you're starting really from the very basic. Uh, let's, I mean, sincerely, uh, we have this, uh, let's say, window or let's say, uh, panel for choosing which operation we want to do. I usually really keep the select uh, option and stay with that always. Uh, everything else, we, we will do it with the shortcuts, uh, believe me. So second operation we can do. The second operation that is the, again, very basics is the rotation of an object. So rotation of an object, you do it with R. It's kind of intuitive blender, uh, sometimes no, but usually if you click the first letter and you try with Alt, Shift or Control, you are doing the operation you want to do. So uh, if you click R, you see that again, you are rotating. Uh, here you're rotating again, in a, uh, with a, let's say around a direction that is perpendicular to the view that you chose. If you want to move the around that precise direction, you can click that direction. So if I click X, for example, I move around the X. If I click Z, I move around Z. If I want to do a precise movement, I can type the, the, the angle. The angle is in degree important. So if I click 45, now I did a precise rotation of 45 degrees. If I do it, for example, in the X direction, now I have a cube that is rotated completely. If, uh, again, I want to uh, put back all the rotation, I can click zero, zero, and zero. And now uh, the cube is back. Last operation that is, again, in the very, very basic, is the scaling. So a rigid, let's say, transformation of the object. Scaling is done with S. S, if you click only S, the scaling is isotropic. So uh, if you, let's say, move, you see that all the direction are scaled equally. If you click on, on one direction, again, you can scale the, your object in one precise direction. Why? As before, and you can scale an object also uh, along a plane. So you can click Shift Z, and you can scale your your object along, uh, let's say, the plane perpendicular to Z. Again. So this is our uh, first uh, object. And these are the three operations that practically uh, you will use, again, I would say 80% of the time. So you will have to grab, move, rotate your object like many, many times. Now, uh, I want to delete this object, for example. And to delete, I click X. X is deleting. It asks, like, you want to delete? Yes. 
So once you delete your object, you can, I mean, not once you delete, I mean, you can add now a new object by clicking Shift A. Shift A open a menu. And this is very long and there are uh, easy and complex stuff. What we will cover in the in the full workshop actually, so not only today. Today we will cover only mesh and probably curves, but we will also cover um, text, images, light, and camera. Everything else, it's a bit advanced and some of them I've never used them. So let's say, I don't know, I mean, try as you want and but principally you will always use mesh when you go on mesh you will see another uh, bunch of uh, different uh, basic meshes that blender offers there is plane cube circles uh, uv spheres uh, cones torus and also a monkey uh, this is the nicest actually uh, blender offers a monkey that is called uh, Suzanne. Uh, I don't know why. It's nice. So <laughs> let's leave the monkey. And now let's start uh, adding uh, again a cube. And let's try to understand which is like uh, our final image. We, we always want to get the intuition. I mean, we always, always want to start to plan an image with the final goal and then we are in time to change stuff but in principle we need like an idea so here i will send you uh the design i mean i'm sorry guys i mean the 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 group of uh Bartol, uh, is the luckiest one because we are going to repeat their experiment and here i'm sending in the chat the design for the gate that i want to make and here, that's actually true, Roger. <laughs> now, actually, it's not only because you asked. I mean, a lot of people asked, but uh, your design covered most of the thing I wanted to do. So very good, <laughs> lucky you, and cool. So uh, please uh, download the two images, and now, I want to add the image to get the, to, to try to understand what I have to do to make that. To add the image, there are different ways. For example, you can add Shift A, image, uh, reference, for example. And here it asks you uh, which image you want. So you take workshop and you uh, add the image. So here you will see uh, the image yeah, it will put it uh, again perpendicular to the view that you have at that moment. But uh, since this is the top view, we want that to be updated, I mean, to be perpendicular to our view. I grab it and I put it like here. So this is the, um, the first image we want to make. And the second one is the lateral view. Again, I sent it. Uh, again, reference and lateral design. Again, this one, let's put it here and here. If you don't have this open, again, is uh, you open it with N. Okay, wait like one second if to download and put the images. So for example, uh, since this one is lateral, I want also to rotate it 90 degrees so I can see from this view. Okay. It, uh, okay, can you say again to add the image? Uh, the image should be in the chat. Can you see the image in the chat? Uh, send successfully. How to add the scene? 
how to add. Uh, to add is add image. How to add? Dot, there is no image here. Uh, I mean, the I can show you, I mean, it tells precisely that I'm um, file design sent successfully. I don't know why you don't see. Why? I can see it. It's in the chat, not in the question and answer. Eh? Can you see it now? This is weird can see it in the chat. So you can download it now and add it. I was thinking it was more easy, let's see. I can even issue with Zoom version. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, it's not so crucial, okay? This was only to uh, show you, uh, okay, you can send by email. That's best. Uh, I mean, it's not crucial, okay? You can do whatever, I mean, you. it's, it's only to, to show you, like it, it's a procedure that is better to, to have, but it's not crucial to do it. So here, for example, what we're going to do is like easy and you can see the numbers and you can repeat, okay? So no problem if you don't have the image. The important thing is that if you have, uh, once you have an image you want to import, you can do it either by clicking shift a image reference or by dragging the image directly here that's it that's the important thing so add images not to have it actually because now i want to go in the z direction and i want to make something similar to this okay so it's actually five strides not the big, not the biggest deal, and big contacts on the right, on the two sides. So, seeing this, I can see that, uh, for example, I can grab my object, put it on one side, and since this, let's say this this object is um, long in the y direction, I can scale it on the y direction s y, and scale it like this. And I think this would be also long in the X direction, as we can see. There it is. Here, it, it has to be also long in this other direction. And so we can scale it on X. Uh, it's not important the numbers. Uh, you will make your image and it's fine. Don't worry. So we can grab it on X and put it here, for example. Now for, we have uh, the same contact, but on the other side, okay? So instead of like adding a new uh, cube and then changing the properties of that cube, what you can do is clicking Shift D. Shift D is duplicate, du uh, duplicate. And uh, very good, thanks, uh, thanks, Julia. Uh, once you duplicate, uh, you are already in the grab option, so you can move directly your object. So if now I click X, I can move it and put it almost in a place I like. Okay, put it here. So again, now I have to make the five different uh, gates. And to make those, I can, again, for example, duplicate, put it in the middle, and scale on the X direction. And this can be thin like this. So I can grab it X like this. So now I want to do this kind of precisely, okay? Because all the five gates are equally, let's say, spaced. So I can now uh, look one second and how big is my object? And as I can see, this object is big uh, 0.35 meter, 
random number. I want to put it to something that is more uh, 25. Yeah. So 25 is a nicer number for me. And now I can, let's say, move, the, uh, let's say, duplicate the object and move it of a number that makes sense. I can, let's say, make some easy calculation. I can move it by one. One is too much, probably. 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is nice. So again, shift D, X, 0 0.5. Shift D, X, 0 0.5. Shift D, X, 0 0.5. Okay, I have my five gates, and now I have only to adjust this guy. So we have a top view that is almost the same now. Okay. If I now go to the side view here, what I can see is that, oops, so here for one second, the gates are a bit thinner than the, uh, the, the contacts. So what I do now is to take the five gates, one, two, three, four, five, sorry. To select more than one thing, you click shift and then you click on, while you're clicking shift, you can select more things. So you click on one, shift, click on two, click on three, click on four. Click on there are different ways to do multiple selections. You can do it by holding uh, left click and selecting all the thing. You have to pay attention because uh, once you're doing this, for example, now we selected also uh, this image because it was in, uh, in the same direction. Or uh, you, you can do it by clicking uh, C and you have a circle. When you, while you click C, you, it appears a circle and while scrolling you can change the dimension of the circle and if you now go across the images you see that uh, you are selecting to deselect the image in circle mode you have to click middle mouse button on top of the image and you deselect okay so again let's do it like this because i don't want to select uh, the image behind and let's scale those by a factor, I don't know, 0 0.75, 0 0.6. Yeah, nice. OK. Last thing we need to add for making this image here, it's a background. Ah, wait, sorry. I scale it completely. I have to scale Z 0 0.6. Otherwise, it's ugly. Uh, what we need to do now to uh, finish the image is the background play. So we, we need to add the, the SIO2. Before doing this, I have a suggestion and it's a, something to notice. You can see now that we just started the image and already uh, we, have, we start having a lot of elements. Once you will do your image, probably, I mean, if it's easy, fine, it's not a big deal. But if it starts to be complex, finding an object in the middle of a, of a scene can be a mess. And to find your objects, you have here on the top right, the list of objects that you can, uh, let's say, that you have in your scene. As I said, the scene is at the composition of all these objects. One cool thing to do is, to select each object now and give the right name to everything. So for example, uh, this cube here is our left contact. This cube here is, I'm sorry, this cube here is our right contact. And this is gate one, gate two, gate three, gate four, and gate five. Uh, this is uh, really important when you have a ton of stuff. I mean, sometimes you, I, I, I arrive to 
cube 256. And when you see cube 256, find the, the right cube and remember which cube is what, it's not easy. And sometimes you can lose, I mean, I, I lost like 10 minutes of looking for the, the, the shape I wanted to select. So this is something you learn by experience, always name your objects. <laughs> So the last thing we want to add is the background plate. Uh, let... Thanks, Alfredo. The background plane, you add, again, Shift A, select uh, Mesh Plane. Sorry, I went a bit fast. And we want to put it just below everything and scale it that is it, it's a background. So it's, it should be in this case everywhere. Very small comment here, since yes, yeah, I'm in time. Uh, background plane or no background plane is uh, your choice. For example, uh, typically, if you are doing a uh, figure one, what I like is to um, leave the transparent background to put the image let's say, to, to have the image that is, it feel the, let's say, it fit well in the, in the paper. But in general, I mean, uh, the, the background will give you like uh, a strong contrast with the, if you're putting it in a paper. It's more maybe for a presentation, um, for, in, in my view, but this is like personal. So if you like the background plane, it's, it's always something nice. And it's also useful if you, let's say, need to give the perspective with shadows, because at that point you can see the shadows on the on the plane if you have a background, and all these things we will see it later. So uh, don't worry. Now there is one important thing to do, and is to move those objects on top of the plane because everything touch the the bottom. The, 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 the substrate. There are few different ways to do it and there are some that are let's say lazy and in my opinion really annoying and some of them that are let's say more uh, clever the best way to put an object on top of another it is to use the snap operator here you can see in the center uh, a magnet so if we click on the magnet here, how do I deselect an object? The, the deselection is by clicking, a, uh, or you click on another object, or uh, that's it, or you click on nothing. Uh, so if, uh, okay, I see uh, the magnet here, and you can select uh, how to snap an object on another. For example, here it's fine to put the bottom face of our cubes that are uh, our gates and contacts on top of the face of the background plane, since the background plane is actually, uh, the background is uh, adding a plane, mesh, shift A, mesh, plane. Yeah, sorry, I know Julie. And, uh we'll say so if you click now face and you click grab z you will see that it appears a small ball where you have the the cursor and if you click now you will see that the uh let's say the cube is not precisely to the face below if you repeat this operation with all the different gates this one is too much. You should have this thing. When you snap, it's important that um, the object, the face you want to snap is in the right position. For example, and explain. So if I want to repeat the same operation, but this object is below the plane, if I try to snap it on top, it's impossible. Also, if I put it above and then I, I go here, it goes above. 
because the starting position is important. So all if you want to snap something on top of something, uh, put it in a way that is the right face that is, in, let's say, that, that does the movement. So it, now I try to snap it, it goes well. It's also important to snap that you see the face. For example, if I try now here, and I'm in this plane, I mean, in this view, in which I don't see the face on which I want to snap, I simply cannot snap on that face. And uh, the thing goes crazy. I don't know if, if, uh, where, where, where it goes. So if now I snap, it goes well. So this is the snapping. Okay. Now that we have all this thing, I think we can delete the image for who has the image. And this is the image I want to have for today for the first project. So now we will go on the second project and we'll talk a bit about uh, the making the, the second, the, the molecules and stuff like that. The very last thing uh, actually we can do today on this project on the nanocube, the nanotubes is to add another plane. This plane, I will show you probably at the end of the next lesson that this plane will be our graphing. And then maybe if I can, at the end of the next lesson, we will also roll the graphing to make a nanotube. Otherwise it would be the first thing of the third lesson. So the only thing is to put it above the context. And maybe if you want to scale it a bit, not really. So for now, that's it. So we have our uh, basic 3D image for the project one. And now we can move to project two. To change completely project, uh, to change completely project, we open again a new scene and we call it uh, run. Because actually, I mean, this will be a kind of more random thing in which we will put some laser, photons, uh, objectives, uh, molecules, uh, everything together, trying like to make uh, something nice at the end. <laughs> the idea I have, again, uh, I can try to share it. I mean, I was thinking really, I, I had, I prepared everything here and I tried to share it. It's not important again. This is only to give you like the, 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 the thing I want to do. It's this one. So it's to have a molecule. It will not be precisely that. I, I changed it a bit the, the thing. So, but this is the idea I have now. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's actually not important. So it's only to give like the intuition of which uh, object we need. So to make this image, um, we will need different things. So let's start by the basics. We will need again a background plane here. So the background plane is again mesh, shift A, mesh, plane. And let's take this plane, grab Z, and let's put it a bit down. The second thing is the optic uh, table, let's say. And the optic table for now will be a cube. And this cube, I want to make it a bit thinner mm, for no reason actually. And to snap it on the the other plane. So we have our background plane here and our optic table. Let's already name it because this would be like a ton of things. So this is the BG. And this is our uh, optic table. For now, we will have a solid optic table and in the Third lesson, we will make the holes in the optic table. So uh, let's 
scale again these two things to have like a huge uh, optic table and scale it, shift Z. So we scale it on the plane. Again, we will add, we have our uh, background, let's say, and we will add now the glass slide. The glass slide is again a cube. Uh, sorry, mm. forgot the snap. This cube is uh, thinner. Let's say let's go like this. Yeah, I like no maybe more. And long, let's see, a bit longer than a single molecule, and a bit wider. Let's see. This is our glass slide, and we can again snap it on top of our uh, optic table. So, what do we need next? We need again a UV sphere. This forget this now. This UV sphere will be uh, the basics, the the basic object for creating a structure of molecule actually. And then I want a first cylinder, and this is our uh, objective. So let's actually. Let's look at objective, and this is glass. Uh, and the sphere, I don't have a precise name. Let's call it uh, sphere. It's a good name for what it is. We will not have so many spheres today. Last thing I want is a laser. And the laser is again a cylinder that we grab it and we scale it on the Z direction. Grab it, Z. And let's for now put it somewhere else. Later, we will uh, play with our laser. Because now, uh, which one is it? OK. Because now uh, I want to start with something that you don't usually find in uh, uh, YouTube. All this thing is, uh, I will send a reference in, I mean, send a lot of references for doing everything we did, and also more complex stuff for who's interested. But now I want to make a photo, OK? So I want to make something that actually has a shape. And the shape is defined with a mathematical function, OK? So for example, uh, what, I'm, what I'm aiming for is, uh, I don't know, e to the minus x squared times sine of x. So something that is, uh, is an oscillation that is grows in the center and then dies. To do this, uh, you cannot do it with the basic operation we, we have done. I mean, there is no one of, none of those, uh, let's say, shape can be transformed in something else with the basic operation we have done. A cube, also, if you scale it, it remain a parallelepipedus. If a sphere can be uh, an ellipse, but it stays with this geometry. So all we go inside the geomet geometry and start to change and put your hands on top of the geometry of your object, or we can uh, ask for help for the Blender community because it's really uh, strong now. And what I want to talk about, uh, what, to talk, uh, what I want to talk about now, is the um, add-ons. So the add-ons uh, are practically Python scripts that you can import in Blender, and they are making uh, some particular thing 
that your Python script did. Uh, so, by the way, uh, Blender is made in Python. So if you're good in Python, there is uh, this scripting box here in which you can really make everything with Python. I tried a few times and it's super nice actually. So if you are interested, we can also chat about this, but it's uh, something that I will not cover absolutely in this course. It's super advanced actually. So if you go in edit preferences, you will see here on the left add-ons. Click on add-ons and you look for extra. You will see extra objects and extra, uh, sorry, extra curves and extra mesh. Click both because I will use both of the things. So it's um, once you select the two uh, add-ons, you will see this different menu. You will see that there is new things in the menu. And one of the new things that is really like gold for us, for the physicists in general, is the math function. So now we can really add a math function as a play. So for example, we add a Z math surface. And when you add, a, sorry, let's delete. I forgot to say one thing that is actually important. Every time you add an object, you move an object, you grab an object, you scale an object. What? Mm. Mattel, uh, could you please repeat how to add the add-on? Okay, sure. On the uh, edit here, top left, preferences. You see the add-ons and then you look for extra and you click in this small square. Once you click, it's already inside. So you don't have to click install. If you want to install a Python code that you have that does something particular, you can install a Python code and there are some really nice uh, tutorials on internet and you can select it. So here I don't have it actually, but yeah, uh, here you should have now these two. Is it time? You you managed to do it? Probably, yes. Oh, very good. Uh, I was saying that every time you add a new object, you, you do any operation, anything that you can do in Blender, after you do it, you have here on the bottom left, but just after, it's like it appears once, a little box in which there is written everything, all the parameters of your, of the things you just did. So for example, here you can see my cylinder. And if I want the cylinder with less vertices, I can select the number of vertices of my cylinder. I can select the radius, the depth, that is actually the height. I don't know why they use uh, depth, etc. So the cool thing, I mean, the, the cool and bad thing is that these options are possible. I mean, you can access these options only when you add the, I'm oh, sorry, only just after an operation is finished. Once you click something else, whatever you click, the this box is removed and there is no way you can take it back. If you want to change something, you have to delete the object and add it again. So if you add it again, there is again this box. This appears. It happens if you grab, you see the box. If you scale, you see the box. There is written what, what you did, what you just did. And if you want to change one thing, you have one last chance to do it. Said this, we can come back to the ZMI surface. Why? Because mesh, math function, Z surface. Here in the little box, there is the equation we want to actually make. And it's something that's super nice. I mean, you can lose, I mean, I don't know how many times I tried to make a sine wave or a photon or whatever by trying really to smooth out a, a curve by really playing with vertices, etc. It's a mess. This thing, it saved my life. 
So, for example, now I will make a sign of uh, six times x times x minus uh, one three. Uh, the language is the same as Python, so the exponent is uh, the double star. And as you see, just in the moment you click uh, enter, you have your sign weight. Okay. Let's again move in. And what we want to do is that to increase the size, for example, now we are using x as a variable, so we increase the size of x. And I saw the last time that uh, nine is a good number. And for the future, because actually I know it, so I want like this to be a single line practically. So this one, I want to put it at 0 0.1. We don't need the subdivisions. So we can bring the subdivision on Y. Sorry, we don't need the subdivision on Y because we, we actually, it, it's flat on Y. We don't have any change. And then we need a lot of subdivisions on X, like 100 to smooth out the, the surface. So now we have our, our surface. Okay, I see that how to add the surface. I will explain it again now. Before doing this, um, there is one useful thing that I, I wanted to tell now, that is the um, hiding object. For example, yeah, there is add. So hiding objects is something very useful here. Uh, now, if I don't, if I click away, I don't select the, the wave here, it's very difficult to see what's happening to the wave if I want to change something. And a useful thing, that I can do is to remove one object that is now, but not removing from the scene. So hiding an object. And as I said, Blender is intuitive. So if you want to hide, you click H. So if you start hiding objects, you can hide everything. And you can see very well the your mesh that you're doing now. If you want to um, let's say get back your um, your meshes, what you can do is to see here. Here you see that there is uh, a nice open where you uh, on the object that you see on the scene, and a nice close where uh, the object is hidden. So you can click here to put again all the things. Another thing, uh, another cool thing of I is instead of hiding everything else by clicking and hiding the single object, there is the option of hiding everything else in once. That is by uh, Shift H. So you select the object you want to keep, and then you click Shift H. Shift H hide everything else. And if you want to come uh, to let uh, to uh, to have the full uh, scene, what you can do is to click Alt H, and Alt H is to put everything back, so unhide everything. Uh, Julia, is there? You still need the to add this map surface, or is fine? Actually, this is important. Is, is it clear to unhide a specific object again here on the Top uh, right, there is this eye here. There is an eye closed and an eye open. And okay, okay, let's re add this object. And hide, 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 hide. Shift A. So you add a mesh. So you add a um, map function, ZMAT Z surface. And once you add the ZMAT surface without clicking anything else, you have this 
box here on the bottom left, you take this, uh, I don't have map function. Okay, so you have to go in preferences, edit preferences, add-ons, uh, look for extra, add curve, add mesh. Did you manage? Okay, with the with this little box, post. Do someone else has problem with uh, with uh, adding a matte surface? Seems no. Okay. 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 Okay, so let's continue now uh, because we actually are really close to finish. Uh, to edit the function, you can do it only when you add the matte surface. Uh, mesh matte function, Z matte surface. You have this box here and you have the Z equation. So you can really type in which is the equation you like. So as an example, so something times Y minus Y. So this is the, oh, such an ugly function. Okay, you can add this thing if you want. I don't know what it is, and absolutely. So you don't have to click it anywhere else if you want to modify the function. Once you click anywhere else, you have this function and you keep it. So if you now want to re-change the function, you delete the object, you add it again, and once you add it, you have the same thing you had before. So you can now re-modify the thing. And you have your kind of photon, let's say. OK. Can you do Batman? Uh, yes, you can do Batman. Absolutely. If you have the equation, I think you have the equation. You can do that. Thanks for that. So let's take this button and go on a view that is kind of decent. And let's grab this button and put it here. OK, I still have 20 -ish minutes. And there is one last thing I want to say uh, on, let's say, the, the Blender, because actually this is more than enough for today. I think I stressed you enough. enough. And I want to add a new object that is completely new. And I had a request for fibers. And actually, it was a nice request because, uh, sorry, request, because um, this gave me the opportunity of, uh, of telling you about, for the first time, to add a curve. You can add a ton of different curves again. So depending on what you want to do, you want an arc, you want uh, something that is already has already a predefined shape, you can decide and put the curves you like. If you want to add a fiber, for example, that is uh, you want to make it in a random-ish shape, uh, you can add a Bezier. Uh, if you have tried to play with uh, generally with any 2D software also. Uh, you probably got in touch with the uh, with a Bezier curve, and the Bezier curve practically is a curve that is defined with the position of let's say vertex position and the let's say derivative of the curve at just before and just after each vertex here you cannot see any vertex you cannot see any derivative you cannot see anything and for the first time 
in this, let's say, curse, we will change what is the mode, the operation mode of Blender. We, I didn't mention it because all the first part is trying to understand how to make, uh, to, orient, to orient our scene and to make object inside, but now we can try to go inside one object. So for the first time, we try to modify the geometry of an object. And to do that, we have to go in edit mode. Okay, here, don't never, I mean, I showed you that edit mode is here. So you, if you want to check if you are in edit mode, you can look here, but the shortcut is tab. So if you click tab, you see now that you enter inside the object. One important thing is that the edit mode is selected to an object. So you cannot, once you are in edit mode of this object, you cannot click on this sphere. The sphere doesn't exist. In this operation, only exists the object you are editing. So now we can, for example, take this vertex and make the shape we like. For example, if you want, you can, ah, sorry. Uh, the first, this is the first operation that we are doing in editing. And the first, the, the first operation is extrude. Sorry. Let's recap editing. Uh, everything we did before, grabbing, scaling, and uh, rotating is valid. So any vertex uh, can be uh, scaled, rotated, or grabbed. So here I can grab this guy and bring it wherever I want. I can rotate it and the, the curve change in depending on what I'm doing. But now I can create new geometry. So once I'm in edit mode, I can really make new, new stuff appearing. And the first way to do it is by extruding one, uh, one vertex. And for example, if I click E now, I see that a new vertex coming from the previous vertex appears and I can place it wherever I want. So I can rotate it and I can extrude a new vertex and rotate it and extrude a new vertex. Save it. Probably here it is a mess. Yes. And now we have our weird uh, fiber going and deleting vertices. Okay, I see that there are uh, someone, is there some issues with uh, something? Okay, so uh, I think we can also finish practically this, let's say, first class by giving some, let's say, some real geometry to our uh, curve, because a curve is a, uh, is a, no how do you make it curved? Uh, if you add a Bezier, it's already, I mean, it's, it's interpolating practically, so you can decide the curvature of your object by uh, Okay, sorry. Uh, so we can add a real, let's say, geometry to the, to the curve, because a curve is an object that um, exists in your view, but doesn't exist in your uh, render, in your final image. The way to, let's say, give uh, to, to, let's say, give it an existence in the real final image is by uh, going here in this panel and clicking in this curved shape here. Scroll down until you see bevel 
and give it some depth. So now our curve is actually real. And now it's, uh, it seems, uh, I mean, okay, this is completely weird. I will adjust it before <laughs> for the next time to give it like a decent shape. But in principle, you, you got the point. For, for, so for example, if I want to make it this thing that touch the table, and I can bring it here and here. And for example, so this one is in a completely weird position. Let's bring it here and go here. Also maybe. Sorry, one second. Oh. And okay. Oh, wow. And yes. Okay, now we have our fiber that is will bring the laser to our molecule. Let's say this is something really, really random. Okay, um, the next lesson will be like more funny. Let's say for this time we only learn up really the the very basics. Please uh, try at least once to play a bit with uh, grabbing, moving, adding, deleting objects, hiding, and making your scene. My suggestion is really to personalize what you're doing. I mean, make um, add new objects, thinking like I will make this thing. Give, you, give yourself a goal, because I mean, in principle, after the next lesson, that will be modeling. We will be able to really uh, starting from one shape and completely change it. So, for example, this cube here will be this objective here, and so on. Uh, I think I'm that time. I will send the references on YouTube videos and stuff that I like, I mean, that I liked when I was doing uh, what was learning. Another important thing is, I will send it in the chat. Please, um, Julia, send it around. This is the shortcut, uh, uh, let's say, a bunch of shortcuts that I selected and I will use it a lot of time. So everything we did today is in the, is in this uh, Word file. And then I will I save this and send it around. And I think that we can enjoy a nice beer because I really need it. <laughs> okay, uh, if, now we have still 10 minutes. So if you have any question, please uh, send it in the middle of this. How did that more points for where you curve in the edit mode? Okay, Simone answered. Okay, she's enjoyed. Yeah. If we want to answer all the other questions, that's my third So I will send you all the files by email to the people that registered in the form. The form is still open, so you should see them to register, but they're still registered in the form, so I have your email. And kind of mind that for the top of five We are going to have here. I don't know if you write it in the email, but we wait for your website. Thank you. Uh, uh, one last thing I want to tell everyone is that if you want to check uh, my previous work, this is my uh, advertisement, let's say. Uh, this is a page uh, I have on Facebook in which I'm, um, let's say, putting uh, 
my my previous work for the group and for uh, actually principally for the group and also from for some external professors if you i mean if you like it uh, enjoy <laughs> i will also send you the registration of this class so if someone wants to follow it again to remember all the interviews we will we will have it very good guys so see you website bye then bye bye this was happy <laughs> <Ciao. laughs>